To illustrate the rhombus corollary, we're going to start with a quadrilateral that's already a parallelogram. You can see it. You've got the marks opposite sides parallel, opposite sides congruent. But let's add something to this. So we'll take this figure and our handy dandy compass like this, and we're going to swing an arc like this. Oh, remember this. And then what I'll do is I'll just well, merge these points. Ah, so now I've got sides that are, or adjacent sides that are congruent, if these, because they're on the same arc. If the adjacent sides are congruent and the opposite sides are congruent, then by the transitive property, all four sides are congruent. And there you go. You've got a figure that looks like this. This is a rhombus. Well, let's explore the rectangle corollary, again, starting with our good friend, the parallelogram. Lots of tick marks here. Opposite sides congruent, opposite sides parallel, opposite angles congruent. Now, all we have to do right here, remember, this is any old parallelogram. Let's construct a perpendicular right here, in this case, a ray. And I want to attach this point to this. Sketchpad does this well. We're going to merge like that. Now remember, I just made one right angle, but the opposite angles are congruent. So if this angle is a right angle, so is this one. Adjacent angles are supplementary. So if the blue angle is 90, I guess this one has to be 2. So if one angle is a right angle, all four are a right angle. And therefore, we have a rectangle. So this corollary is interesting because many textbooks will define a rectangle as a parallelogram having one right angle. Again, if it has one, it has four. The square corollary tells us that a quadrilateral must be both a rhombus and a rectangle to be a square. Now we know both of these are, of course, parallelograms. Let's illustrate this by taking a rhombus and a rectangle and making them into squares. In the first case, a rhombus, I'm going to say, let's set up one angle to be a right angle, just like we did with the rectangle. You remember that? We know opposite angles are congruent, and therefore, if I line up like this, using the transitive property, all four angles are congruent. I like that. That makes it a square. Over here, I've got a rectangle. All I need to do is mark a distance here. Let me mark this with my compass, swing an arc here, and I find this distance, if I extend up to this distance, I now have adjacent sides that are congruent. And since opposite sides are congruent, as in a parallelogram, transitive property makes all the sides congruent. Both ways, what we've come up with is this figure right here. This figure is a square because it is a rhombus and it is a rectangle. We already know that the diagonals of any parallelogram bisect each other. Got the tick marks here to show it. Now, this theorem tells us if these diagonals are also perpendicular, then it's a rhombus. Let's illustrate it. I'm going to draw a line perpendicular, the green line, perpendicular to the diagonal DB. So now I extend like this. I want to line it up, not like this, line it up so that those diagonals are bisecting each other. And this theorem says, there you go, congruent sides. Now, it's an if and only if, biconditional. So I, if I wanted to prove this, I would go back to my four triangles in either direction. Let's suppose I started by saying the diagonals are perpendicular. Then these four triangles are congruent by side angle side and corresponding parts of congruent triangles gives me four congruent sides. Conversely, let's start with the sides congruent. If I do that, and then again using these four triangles, I've got 
four congruent right triangles using side 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 and by corresponding parts of congruent triangles all these angles must be congruent the angles meeting here and the only way for that to be is they must all be 90 degrees so you could it works in both directions remember this is a what a rhombus looks like diagonals are perpendicular well again starting with a parallelogram we know the diagonals bisect each other because that's a property of parallelograms however to make this a rectangle all we need to do is make them also congruent here's an illustration let's draw these circles I've got a red circle with a red radius I've got the blue circle with a blue radius I move the figures around and here they become one same circle now I've got a rectangle you can just see intuitively that the two diagonals are now both diameters of the same circle we will show a proof for this It'll be better in chapter 10 when we know something about inscribed polygons and um, we'll save it for then it'll be kind of fun but right for now this illustration may help you see it there you go diagonals congruent it is a rectangle another theorem involving the rhombus I'm going to start again with my parallelogram remember diagonals bisect each other opposite sides are parallel if I were to set it let's say it look like this this theorem says if these diagonals bisect the opposite angles then all the sides are congruent notice there that we only have two different acute angles the blue ones and the red ones I could go to the four triangles to prove this biconditional theorem uh, let's suppose we started with this we start with these each of these diagonals bisecting the opposite angles the blue angles are all congruent as are the red so all the triangles are going to be congruent here by angle angle side therefore we could say by corresponding parts of congruent triangles all of these sides are congruent conversely let's start with the sides congruent and clearly you've got four triangles congruent by side 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 then I could conclude that the corresponding angles are congruent either way we've proven 812 in both directions